What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. So from the title you guys can see that we're going to be setting up a 3.7 gallon Pico anemone only reef tank. Now I know that was a mouthful but trust me it's much simpler than it is. The tank is super easy to take care of. It's only got one fish in it and it's bare bottom. So I'm going to show you guys in a minute. We've got the 10 gallon. Just did a water change on it yesterday. Everything is doing amazing in this tank. If you guys didn't check out the video of me revealing this aquarium then click back it's my most recent video before this one. Now I'm not sure how I'm gonna use the clips to show you guys me setting up the tank. I'm not gonna be doing everything on this video. I'm gonna show you guys it's set up, but I did take some clips to show you guys the process of me setting it up. I don't know if I'm gonna do a voiceover or like an edit, but regardless, here's me setting up the tank so you guys can see that. Alright, now that you guys have seen the tank set up, let's go ahead and dive into what this tank is going to be and some upgrades we're going to be doing to it in the future. So like I said, this is an Imagitarium 3.7 gallon Pico anemone only tank. We've got a maroon clownfish as you guys can see in there. That is the newest addition. Um, he's a couple inches big. He's much bigger than I thought. He looked a lot smaller at the fish store and then after putting him in here, he is uh, much bigger than I was expecting. But um, it's okay, we're gonna leave him in here for a little bit and let him grow out and then we can eventually upgrade him to a larger tank. Um, but he's gonna be the only fish in here since it is gonna be anemones only. I figured a single maroon clownfish would be the perfect fish to get the uh, tank cycled and just have a little bit of movement in there until we can get the tank stable enough to put some anemones in there. So even though I showed you guys the full breakdown and how we built this tank, I'm gonna go through each component so you guys know exactly what we're working with. In the back, we have this Fluval Titanium Heater. It's a 50 watt heater and it keeps the tank stable at 78 degrees. That's what I keep both of the aquariums at. I'm running a Cobalt on the 10 gallon and then a Fluval Titanium on here. I had a Fluval on the 66 gallon SCA reef tank and um, it's local to me. I can get these pretty cheap and easy so I decided to get one for this. Um, the lid that comes with the tank um, is nice because it obviously keeps evaporation down and it covers this back chamber where the filter is. Um, but one thing that I had to do was switch it. Um, this is normally a feeding hole, but I, it allows you to keep the heater in the back and it works out perfectly. So it only sticks out maybe an eighth of an inch, but as long as I'm able to keep everything enclosed and then have the heater in the back with that little half cutout, I think it looks good. And next to that is just the stock return pump. This thing's pushing out maybe 50 gallons an hour. 
um, and then the stock return nozzle. But to increase flow, we added a surface skimmer and it's turned down all the way. I'll turn it up as we start to add more anemones. But for the fish right now, I think keeping it on low is fine. And then of course that, that also skims the surface of the water so we don't have any of that like nasty film that builds up. Aside from that, we've got this um, light that came with the aquarium. It's, I believe, 12 whites and like three blues or something like that. So it's really weak, um, the blue setting. I would like it to be a little bit more blue. Um, and I will be upgrading the light, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's the light that it came with. For a fish only right now, I think it looks completely fine. It's um, enough light to show what's in the tank and it's not bright enough or high enough wattage to where it's gonna start growing algae. As for filter material, we've got um, some Kemi Pure Blue, a little bit of carbon and some filter floss. Um, that's just to keep um, some of the nitrates down that are popping up. Um, and then coming into the tank, we've got about, I'd say a pound and a half of live rock. Not a lot, but um, to compensate that, what I did in the back under all the filter material is I put a large sponge. And essentially the sponge just acts as more live rock or more surface area for bacteria to grow on. Since there is no sand in the tank and very minimal live rock, I think um, the more beneficial bacteria we can have is obviously gonna do us good. One thing to point out that I think is pretty cool, um, especially at nighttime, is since it is bare bottom, right? You can see my finger under the tank right there, um, but the light illuminates down and it makes this cool little ring because the tank is on a little pedestal thing. So it makes like a little halo on the bottom of it. It's kind of cool. Gives it a nice aesthetic. Now, what are future plans and upgrades for this tank? Well, the light is definitely gonna have to be upgraded. We only have that on there for the fish and even during the day, I sometimes turn it off just uh, so we cut back on any sort of algae growth. But um, yeah, in the future for the anemones, we're definitely gonna have to upgrade the light. What I'm thinking about doing is taking the A80 off the 10 gallon because honestly, this light's really not that powerful. It's only 15 watts and then putting it on the 3.7 and then upgrading the 10 gallon to, I don't know, maybe an AI Prime or something else. Um, that's a little bit higher wattage. If we can get a light that's around 30 to 40 watts, I'd be very happy for this tank and then putting that Kessel A80 on this tank. Aside from that, in the future, I think I'm going to possibly add a Smart Micro ATO. It's the same exact one that's on the 10 gallon. I could probably plumb it into the same reservoir and then obviously just do a different sensor and a whole different kit for this tank. Since the lid is on this aquarium, it doesn't evaporate water that much, if at all, but it would be nice to have an ATO just in case if I go out of town. Besides that, there's not much more to this tank. Like I said, it's very simple. It's an easy setup. At the moment, it's just a Fowler tank. We are gonna be adding some anemones at some point. I wanna let the tank settle in a little bit. Um, for water changes, what we've been doing is taking a little bit of water from this tank and flushing it into this aquarium with some new salt water, of course. Um, but yeah, we're taking this old matured water and we're putting it in here. So I'm hoping that this tank over time will start to kind of develop and resemble the water chemistry of this aquarium because if that's the case, we'll be able to add a couple anemones um, pretty quickly. So I think I'm gonna start out with some green BTAs and then start moving over to the red ones. Um, but in terms of like anemone species, I think I'm just gonna stick to bubble tips. As long as we have maybe two or three BTAs in here with the maroon clown, I would be very happy. That's gonna be it for today's video. I realized it was kind of a short one, but I just wanted to show you guys the new setup. I'm very excited to have this 3.7 gallon going. Only reason I wanted to really post it is because I I know I'm gonna be doing changes to this tank pretty rapidly. So as long as you guys stay updated, I'll be happy. But if you guys have any questions, please comment down below or you can DM me on my Instagram. Links are all in the description below. That being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.